So Andre, at the age of two and a half, um, had a fall off the slippery dip where he um, had an acquired brain injury. Four years after that, he actually had a brain tumour. So he had a tumour extraction at that stage and then two years later it returned last year um, and he had it out again. He's still not um, completely independent. He needs help with um, dressing, often eating, um, getting up and down stairs. Now, the MRI was the first significant piece of machinery that uh, Little Heroes had got for the Women's and Children's Hospital. At that stage, there wasn't one in the hospital. I think we realised that the cancer facilities at the Women's and Kids were fairly bare and that needed a lot of growth. We helped fundraise for an endoscopic suite, which was for surgery, keyhole surgery for, for cancer patients. After that, we went into a playground and diversified a little bit because the kids also needed somewhere to recover, relax while they were in hospital. And then from there, the Michael Rice Centre was developed, all cancer facilities at the women's and kids under the one roof. My little boy, Jed, suffers from a, a rare tumour called a myofibroblastoma. It's quite aggressive and it will always come back every time it's operated on. And I would say sort of once or twice a month, we're at the Michael Rice Centre having tests, iron infusions, scans. In the early days, we were there every week. Jed was in hospital for six months at one point, non-stop. The facilities there are, are, are top-notch, they're absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a modern uh, area, everything is brand new, it's fresh, it's, it's much better than any other department um, we've ever been in and had to, had to deal with. Once we thought that the hospital facilities had been upgraded sufficiently, we wanted to look after the families at home and with the day-to-day -day challenges that they faced. Little Heroes Care Program was developed to do exactly that, paying urgent bills that were required, looking after meals that might have been required, daily house duties, be they looking after the, the yard or internal cleaning. Alex's playground was developed, putting playgrounds in the backyards of families uh, to look after the children if they couldn't get out to public playgrounds. Ivy has um, epidermolosis bullosa. It's a rare genetic skin condition that one in a million children are born with. We need a lot of help in the home to look after our other two children. Ivy has a bath every second day, which consists of a nurse and a carer, and it takes around three hours to do that procedure. Uh, around two years ago, we had an, um, Little Heroes come to us, letting us know about the in-home nurse program. Unfortunately for Ivy's condition, it's not curable, but to have that support in our home, it's fantastic. Staying on the journey through uh, the cancer rehab was really important to us. After speaking to families, speaking to doctors, what we recognised was the urgent next need was to build a world-class rehabilitation centre, a robotic gym to get kids back on their feet, to get their limbs moving the best they could possibly be. Essentially what robotics can do is allow for a high intensity of what we call repetitive but task specific training. So this type of technology is required because it allows you to get up to a level of intensity which is going to be helpful for the children with neurological disabilities improve their skills. Equipment such as the Locomat and Amio Spring allow children to undertake repetitive movements in a very physiological manner. The Locomat for example which is the walking aid allows children to have that pattern of walking which is typical and that allows them to get a high level of repetition for it. Similarly for the Amio spring they undertake upper limb movements but are allowed to occur repetitively so that they can improve those functions for improving everyday activities. There are avatars and other computerized models that are built into the equipment that allows the child to interact with the equipment now in doing that, by keeping the children interested, it actually enhances what we call neuroplasticity, which is that ability of the brain to rewire itself to promote improvement in function. The beauty of the project was that apart from the facility being built and the equipment being put in there, a five-year research program under Ray Russo's guidance could be established as well. There's a lot about robotic technology that we don't know. For example, things as simple as the treatment regimes and how often you need to bring the children in and how much repetition is required for optimal learning is still an unknown factor. 
I can only speak from brain injuries and they thrive on a lot of therapy. So the more therapy he can get, the better. New equipment would be fantastic for Andre. He loves all those interactive computer games. Um, he'd feel really motivated by that. Um, also, it would really improve his gait and his stamina. Miss Polly have a dad and then a sit, sit, sit. And they call for the dad to do a quick, quick, quick. The dad, they came in his bag and they said, and then I'll get the door with the red dad. And not at the door to the issue. It's in the Miss Miss Fellows, straight to bed and make up a boo 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 boo. I'll be back in the morning with my boo boo boo.